Hello everybody, this is Vasily and I'm back with new Cinema 4D quick tip. In this video I'm going to show you how I used to work with grains inside Cinema 4D without any plugins. And that became possible some time ago, once Maxon released their new GPU accelerated cloth dynamics engine. And recently I found a way how to utilize that engine to work with grains. And grain itself, it's just a tiny rigid ball. And because of its simplicity we can create bunch of these balls to simulate sand or even dust effect. But before share any details, let me show you a few video samples. Ok guys, to have fun with grains we need to have some points. And actually in Cinema 4D there are no dedicated point object. Now we will focus on a single point. There are a few object groups which contains points like splines and polygons. And I will go with second just by creating a cube. I will make that editable and go to point mode. I can select all 8 points and merge them into a single one using the weld tool. And now that cube can be named as a point obviously and all this text can be removed and I'm going to multiply this point with a cloner so let me wrap it in the cloner and here I'm going to define count like 10 by 10 by 10 and step size like 10 centimeters step 10 and 10 centimeters so believe me or not right now we have 1000 points in that project and I can visualize them using the additional cloner let me put this on the bottom mode can be changed from grid to object, instance mode to multi instance and here we need to drop our cloner with points and distribution can be set to vertex and if you remember grain is just a little ball so I'm going to create a sphere with radius of 5 which is gonna give us a size of 10 centimeters if I'll drop it here now we would have 1000 of grains uh, we can simulate this cloner with points because we're just for rendering purpose. This cloner is gonna be supplied with simulation cloth tag and the thickness is gonna be set to same 10 cm. And now if we will hit play, my grains are falling down, which is perfectly fine. That's because in the project settings, under simulation tab, scene sub tab, we have a gravity, uh, which is defined as negative value. So let me rewind. I'm gonna have to choose different tool and different object mode. Now I'm going to put this cloner with points to just above the ground level and I would like to have a uh, ground obviously so that plane gonna be supplied with uh, simulation collider tag and now if we'll hit play uh, there is something happening like uh, these most of the grains are intercolliding with each other and they colliding with the floor except that few pillars of grains which are falling down we can fix that issue just by going to project settings, simulation sub tab, and we might increase these sub steps, collision path, whatever else. But instead, I'm just going to randomize that cloner with points a little bit. Just a small chaos can be added using the randomizing position, like 2 cm would be enough. And now, if we'll rewind and replay the simulation, you see that it helps to keep everything on plane, like nothing is passing through that plane and there is a nice uh, heap of pebbles. So maybe the next step would be to multiply uh, that amount even more. So in that cloner, if we will go here in the count field, we can type, not with crazy value, just let me maybe double them, like 20 by 20 by 20. And you see how slowly it updates. But because for cloner, it's a difficult task to uh, replicate that point object but let me also show you what is the issue with dynamics and actually it's the same slow as the generating of a points that because that cloner it creates multiple objects with single points but instead we can try a different approach with single object which contain multiple points to do it I just need to wrap this cloner into a connect object 
just don't forget to disable this weld checkbox. I will shift this tag over here and this cloner gonna be clone spheres over the connect object. And right now, if I will hit play, need to wait a bit, if I will hit play, you see how simulation is quickly updated. And actually that's a good approach. Let me now move that connect object a little bit above the ground. And that ground we can increase in its size, like maybe to 1000. I mean 1000. And we can try some forces like uh, turbulence, like this one, and maybe additionally we will add a friction force. Let's see how it works with force, and here we go. Actually, it nicely scattering around uh, all my grains, intercollide and whatever else, and probably that wouldn't be enough to create a sandman. Maybe if we will zoom out a little bit, like this one. It would remind maybe speed of Sandman, but to create Sandman we need even more of his particles. And let me now go back in time and go to default view. So that approach with a cloner is not suitable because of that performance issue. So here's different approach. We now have scene nodes which can help us to create one single object with multiple points within it. Let me now disable everything and hide from render viewport. And I was prepared some asset, which I name it as a point cloud. Let me drop it over here. And by default it creates just 1000 of points. And let me show you how it works with default value. So that point cloud I will move just above the ground. And it still works. And maybe we need to decrease that point size like to 2 centimeters. And you see how quickly it updates. And that's good, so that sphere is gonna be changed to one centimeter, and that cloth tag can be changed to thickness of two centimeters. Now we can hit play. And actually simulation still going, not very fast, and uh, we can improve that thing a little bit. If you will go to project setting, let me pause. Why not pausing? Okay, we will go to project settings and here we would like to decrease that sub step to maybe value of 5 and collision pass maybe we will decrease to value of 1. Now we can replay the simulation and actually we have some speed boost and a lot of real time performance but I think that would be enough to art direct the forces, see how these grains are intercolliding, maybe you need to add some additional colliders, whatever else. And here's one small issue, if I will pause and zoom in, like here, in that area we see no uh, intersection between grains, and here we are some intersection. But you need to know what you just need to give them some time to be relaxed, like maybe additional half of seconds. And here we go. After that time there would be no intersection until where no additional force would be added. So just keep that in mind. Let me now rewind and go back and view. So what is the magic behind this point cloud asset? Let me show you. And you see there are no rocket signs, just very few nodes, some math node, calculation, some distribution and geometry node at the end. But the main thing here is that we see no color here. Like we are in traditional Cinema 4D version 2023.1 and I was luckily enough to discover wet grains inside wet version only because the newest version have some issues and let me show you what they are. So the same project file is opened within newest Cinema 4D version 2023.2 we can start with simulation and there is something happening like there are no collision between grains and grains and colliders and as a trade-off, we got this new stop-motion preset. Uh, that grain dynamics is considered as a bug and removed from the system. And maybe it would appear in future, but currently it's not. And that's it. Sorry for opening and closing arrow of C4D grains within single video, but that really hurts. I really like that new colorful scene nodes, but it's hard to not fall in love with uh, grain dynamics. And moreover, we just replicated my Fickener plugin inside Cinema 4D, so I feel a little bit robbed. 
And by the way, I have even more plugin candidates within my legacy bundle, so you can go and check a link from the description to that video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.